I received a comment on my last video saying that a lot of folks prefer to specify the dimensions of a page or a map using the units in Roll20 rather than by using pixel dimensions. So let's take our map sizer script and enhance it further so that it can accept either units or pixels. So ultimately what we're going to see is a command something like this where we say map sizer will put in our dimensions, you know, like let's say we're going to do it in units and then we'll say units. So 8540 units or like we were doing before where we put in the pixel dimensions and just be able to specify are we going to use units or pixels. All right, so let's see how we go about doing that. So to start out, we're going to rename a few of the variables here, and I'll explain why in just a second. But I'm going to change my map width variable. I'm just going to change that to width. And then I'm going to change the map height variable just to height. I'm going to change those two. And then we're going to go down to our error checking here, and we're going to change these as well to just width and just height. And again, I'll explain why we're doing that in just a second. Okay. We're also going to declare a handful of new variables that will be used a little bit later on in the script. Uh, I'm going to say page width, page height, and then map width and map height. So we're just declaring all those variables here. And again, we're going to be using those in just a minute. Okay. Now, we want to pass in a third parameter to our script. As you saw, it's going to be this unit of measure that we're working with here. So I'm going to set var unit type equal to args3. So now what we need to do is figure out which unit was passed in, whether it was pixels or units, and then we're going to need to do some math. So you remember in the original version of the script, we took in a pixel value and we divided the pixel value by 70 in order to determine the unit size for the page. Well, if pixels is what gets passed in, we're going to do a similar calculation. But if it's units that get passed in, then instead of taking those dimensions for the page and dividing them by 70, we would actually take those dimensions and multiply them by 70 in order to get the pixel values that we'd be using for the map. So again, we want to figure out what unit of measure was passed in and then based on that, perform the appropriate math. So how we're going to do this is put in a switch statement and a switch statement is kind of like an if statement all jacked up. Uh, so we're going to say switch unit type and basically this means, okay, we're going to take the unit type value that we passed in earlier and we're going to check it for a series of possible values. So the first case that we're going to check for is pixels. So if the unit type equals pixels, then we're going to do the following. We're going to take the page width and that's going to be equal to the width divided by 70. So this is the same formula that we did earlier. If we're dealing with pixels, the page width will be in units. So to get the width, we take the pixel value and divide it by 70. Same thing with the height, right? So this is the exact same calculation we did in the last video. We're going to take the pixel value and we're going to divide it by 70. Now we're going to take the map width variable that we created, and we're just going to set that equal to width because again, this is passed it in pixels. So the map object, the actual graphic has its dimensions set in pixels. So we'll just set that to whatever was typed in. And then we'll do the same thing with the map height. We'll just set that equal to the height that was passed in. And then the last thing you need to do in a switch statement is put in this break line. And this is what tells JavaScript that we're done with this particular case. So we're going to pass in unit type. If the unit type is pixels, we're going to set these variables and then we're going to break out of the switch statement. We're also going to put in case units, right? So if we somebody passed in the units value, then it's a similar thing. We're going to say page width equals width, right? Because the width is going to actually be in units. Same thing with the page height. That will also be height. And then the map width. Remember, the map width is going to be the value in units times 70 to get pixels. So it will be width times 70. And same deal for the map height. 
that's going to equal height times 70. Right? So again, just depending on if it's pixels or units, we're going to set these variable values accordingly. Now we're also going to put in a default here, and this is what happens if, oh, and don't forget your break statement. If you, just incidentally, if you don't have a break statement here, then we're going to execute case, and then we would just keep going. We wouldn't actually break out of this. It wouldn't tell us, oh yeah, we're done with the case units. Um, default is what happens if the unit type doesn't equal any of our other cases. So if somebody passed in penny farthings, then obviously that's not pixels. We won't do this. That's not units. We won't do that. We're going to hit default, and default catches everything else. So if they didn't pass in pixels or units, well, we're going to put in some error checking. We're going to say send chat, and again, that'll be from the API, and we're going to say please specify units or pixels. And there we go. And then we will return, just like we have with all of our other error checking. So that's kind of the, the reason that I picked a switch statement here rather than multiple if else statements. It just makes this cleaner to read and it gives us that you know ability to put in error checking just right in this, this block. So I think that's really nice. Okay, so now we're checking to see if we have pixels, if we have units, we've set a bunch of variables. Now what we're gonna do is come down here to the page set command that we did earlier and we're just going to make a couple of quick tweaks to this. So I'm going to change the width here from map width divided by 70. I'm going to change that to page width. And we're going to change the height. So this is why I had us declare all those other variables. Now we have the calculations for the pages width and height. We have the calculations for the maps width and height. And we can just substitute the appropriate values in as we need. In fact, the map set section here is exactly the same. We don't need to make any changes to that because we did all the various calculations up here to determine if it's going to be just the width and height in pixels or if we need to convert it from units. So that's it. Now we have all the, the changes made and now the script will accept either pixels or units. So let's go ahead, let's save this and let's try it out. So you can see I've already typed in map sizer 85 by 54 units. I've got my map on the page. I've got it selected. Let's get a shot. All right, there we go. And we can see the, the page was resized. Let's take a look at the page's dimensions. Okay, 85 by 54, 5950 by 3780. So those are the values that should have been typed in. That's correct. So that's working. And again, just to check one more time, let's let's set up another page real quick here. And we'll try it out with the pixel command instead. And so that's going to be, that's going to be like this. And let's run that. And boom, we see that works as well. Again, we look at our, our page size here and 5950 by 3780, which is 85 by 54 units. So that's how we can further enhance our script so that it accepts additional parameters and allows us to pass in either units or pixels so that you can resize things according to however makes the most sense for you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all the, the feedback that you guys have given so far on the, these scripts. It's, it's been really great. I'm glad you're finding them helpful. And thank you to Keith Curtis for pointing out to me that people would size things in units other than pixels. Uh, so I definitely appreciate that feedback and that gave me a chance to you know do some more work with this script and, and that was great. So uh, thank you again for all your time and attention, folks, and have a great day.